In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fillable form in Microsoft Excel. In previous videos, I've shown you how to do this using Microsoft Word, but there are times where you may want to draw on data from a large spreadsheet database and pull that data into your form. And in those cases, it's going to be easier to create your form in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to show you how to format your form so that when your users open it up, it's going to look like a form and not necessarily like a typical spreadsheet. We're going to go step by step in this video so I can show you how to build your fillable form in Microsoft Excel. All right, so here is an example of the form that we're going to build today, and I'm going to show you some of the features and how we're going to design and build this. You'll notice when I go to the print preview up here, I'm going to click on print preview, and you can see that from a user's perspective, it doesn't look like a spreadsheet at all. It looks like a normal page with a form on it with three different questions. All right, so the way that we're gonna, um, some of the elements that we're gonna look at today when we design this from scratch, we have a drop down list that we've inserted into our Excel form where we can select either full time or part time as an option on this form. It's a, an employee engagement form sample. And if I notice the text in the instructions, if I select part time, that the part-time instructions pull up. So it's a way um, using an if formula that will pull in different information into that cell based on the user's selection from this drop-down list. So that's one feature we're gonna see how to do today. Um, also over here, we have check boxes that users can check to make a selection in one of the questions. And then the other thing that we're going to look at today is how to use VLOOKUP to pull in some information based on a drop-down list. So down here, if I have a drop-down where I'm asked who my manager is and I select from a list of names, I can select a name and then have data automatically populate uh, based off of that name. Perhaps the title and department are, is the example that I'm using in this today. But think about uh, if you were creating a fax cover sheet or other type of form. You could even have your vendors listed out and based on selecting a vendor, maybe that vendor's address would pop up in the form. So there are a lot of ways that you're that you can use this and I'm going to show you how to set that up. Another thing that I'm going to show you if you hang on till the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to hide tabs in your Excel spreadsheet and in the workbook. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this, a way to hide them and then a way to make them very hidden. So be sure and stay till the end so that you see how to do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with a blank spreadsheet. And so from here, the first thing that we're going to do to start creating our form in Excel is we're going to come up to page layout, select size, and then we're going to select the letter. And if you notice very faintly, what happened there was this dotted line um, appeared. And this is my page grid line. So when I'm designing my form now, I know what I need to stay within that dotted line line so that I can stay within an eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper so that it looks like a normal page for my form. And so if you scroll down, you can see these very faint lines here as well. And that's the bottom of your page. So that's the framework that we're going to work within because to design this form, we're going to be merging cells and hiding grid lines and doing different things. So we're going to want to make sure that we have um, that eight and a half by 11 size page selected. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to expand the top row because this is the row we know we're going to want to put the title of our form and we're building an employee engagement survey. And then I know I have a line, a row for some instructions. And then my first question is going to be, um, let's double check here. We're going to ask, please select your employment status. So I'll go ahead and type that first question. All right, and so I'm gonna go ahead and start formatting my columns. I'm gonna drag it over so that um, this column will encompass uh, enough for um, some of my text here and my questions. And then I'm gonna also expand my column C a little bit for my drop down answer. So notice how the dotted line is still there, but the, the columns um, are moving based on my adjusting the, the size. So now what I want to do is if this is 
somewhat the framework that I'm going to work within. So now I can start formatting it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, close in the first column a little bit because that's just where I want to number my questions. But I'm going to um, select all of the cells that are in that top row and I'm going to go back to my home tab and I'm going to select merge and center then I'm going to align that over to the left I'm going to increase the font size to make it big and then I'm going to make it bold and then I'm going to continue to use these alignment buttons up here and align it into the center of the text. So then what I want to do is I can either go up to insert and grab um, a picture or a logo from my computer, or I can copy and paste if I have it open in another document. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy my logo and you can put your logo. And what you can do is you can make sure that it stays within your grid lines there. And then you can expand your column and um, that way you can fit an image or a logo in the top header. So you've gotten your header set up and um, and some of your, your formatting and framework done. All right, so I'm gonna italicize this because this is our first question. And then the first thing we're gonna do is set up for a drop-down list and this and to insert a drop-down box into Excel. One of the ways to do this is to create a table in your workbook on a tab that you're gonna ultimately hide. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to set up our drop-down list items and make it a table. Then we're going to insert the drop-down form field into this cell. So over here on this sheet, I have some um, text that I'm gonna use later on. So I have it pasted here for ease, but I'm gonna go ahead and create my drop-down list um, for the status type, which is I'm gonna say full-time and part-time. And all I do is type the list, the, whatever I want in my drop-down list, I'm gonna just type it into different cells in a column. And then what I'm gonna do is click on any of those items that I create in the list, and I'm gonna hit Control T. And that is going to create a table. And I'll click OK. And then what I can do is I can say, please select will be the, instead of it saying column one, I can overwrite that and say, please select or select status. And then because now that this is a table, it will be dynamic. And so if I ever add anything to this table, uh, the drop down that I create on the other pay on the other sheet is going to automatically update uh, based on what I input here in this table. So now that we've created the table, what we can do is come back over here to sheet one and we want to insert the drop down list here. So all we have to do is go up to data. Under the data tools area, um, there's a drop down here and you're going to select data validation. And that's going to open up a window and allow you to select here. You're going to drop down and select list. And then the source, put your cursor in the source area and then you're going to come over to your your sheet two here where you have your um, your table and you're going to select that as your source and you're going to click OK. And so now you have a drop down over here in Excel. So if somebody were to click on that cell, they would be able to select full time or part time. So that's how we insert the drop down list. Now, based on that drop down list, we want certain instructions to appear automatically. So we'll make um, our instructions here. And let's just say uh, we want to create a box here. We can uh, merge and center. We can left align it and put it in the center. And this is where we're going to use an if formula. And the reason I'm using an if formula here is I want this to default to the full time text. However, if someone selects part time from the drop down, I want it to display a different set of text. So the way to do that is come here and insert an if formula. You type equals if and then we're going to select the cell that we're referencing. Um, so that enters C3 into the formula. So we're going to say if C3 equals part time. And I'm going to type it just the way that it um, is displayed in the list. Then I want it to return 
if it's true, what we want it to return is some sort of part-time text. And then we'll put a quotes to end that. And then you put another comma and now the value if false, then we want it to return uh, whatever the full-time text that we want it to return. So I'm just gonna say full-time text for now. But you can type out or paste in into this formula between those quote marks any type of text that you want to display. And so then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to close my brackets and hit enter. So now it's defaulting to the full-time text because there's nothing selected here. However, if I select full-time, it will default to the full-time text, but if I select part-time, it will pop up with the part-time text. So that's one way to use the if formula. That's a logical value. Um, if, if a cell is returning something, you um, if it's true, you say this. If it's false, it says this. So that's how we're using that formula here for this conditional dropdown. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to insert those checkboxes into your form. So the next question was question number two, and um, how long have you worked for the company? So how long have you worked here? And what we want to do is I'm um, just formatting it the same way as my other question. And then what I can do is select in the area where I want to insert a checkbox. And then I can come up to my developer tab. And if you're not sure how to enable the developer tab, be sure to check out one of the videos on my channel, how to enable it. It's the same way as you would enable it if you're in Microsoft Word. All right, so you would enable your developer tab, and then you have a button over here where you can insert certain controls. And we drop down from there, and we can check, um, have a checkbox form control. And so um, what we wanna do is draw that box wherever we want to have the checkbox. And so it places the box where we can grab it and drag it um, and place it wherever we want. So from here, we can place the checkbox here. It actually, if you expand it, it does say checkbox. So we, um, you can highlight that text and delete that. So it's a simple checkbox. And um, from there, uh, you have that. You can copy and paste it. And if you want to insert more, you can right click. I'm gonna resize it back down so it's smaller. And I'm going to simply copy by hitting Control C. And I'm gonna paste um, my other two checkboxes. And then I can drag those and place them uh, wherever I want in my document. So if I want them to line up here, all I have to do is select them. I can right click and then drag those over here. And those checkboxes are nice because you don't have to protect your document at all for a user to check one of them to put a tick in that box. All they have to do is check the box and it will um, select or deselect. There, that way you have your checkboxes that you can place anywhere you need to in your Excel document. And so for here, our labels were, um, you know, one to two years and so forth. So you could fill in all of your answer options for those checkboxes in those different cells. And again, if you need to move those formatting around, you can right click and use your little arrows will make those micro movements so you can adjust it and get it aligned, hopefully just right for you. And I'm gonna just move that over so it's in line. All right, the next question the, that we're going to set up is going to use a VLOOKUP formula to look up information from a large database. If you have a large database, a big spreadsheet of information that you want to pull pieces of information out of and return uh, data based on something that's selected from a drop-down list, this is how you're going to do it. Um, so we're going to say question number three is um, we want to say, who is your manager? And then based on what they select, um, the manager's title and um, maybe the manager's department will automatically populate. So we're going to highlight this cell. I'm going to come back up to the Home tab and highlight it because that's where we're going to want to insert our drop-down list. And so our drop-down list is simply going to be uh, 
the list of names of our um, from our database. And so sheet three over here is a simple database that I've set up um, as a table that we're gonna turn into a table. So if you have a whole spreadsheet, what you're gonna wanna do is click anywhere within that data and hit Control T and make it into a table and click OK. And then this turns your um, information into a table. And notice that um, it did add extra columns. And so what I can do is replace that with the supervisor title and department that we want um, to be in those headers. And then I can delete that top row. So now we have our database that is in the format of a table. So now we can use it not only to create the drop-down list, but then also to use the VLOOKUP formula in those other cells where we want to return the title and department, depending on what is selected. Again, the other example that I mentioned that you can use this for would be to return vendor addresses or something like that in your form um, that may be an invoice or a fax cover sheet type of form that you're using. This is very helpful. So then what I'm going to do is come back over here and we're going to insert our drop down list again. We go up to data, we go up to the data tools, the data validation area, and we're going to select the list value again. And in the source tab here, we're going to come and select just the first column of our database here. So I selected up here, I selected A, so it selects the entire column as the source, and I'm going to click OK. So now in my drop down, I have three names, uh, the three names that are in my database. Uh, one thing that's neat about uh, the fact that you've linked that source, uh, the entire column, is now if I ever go back and say I add or change something on my database, if I make a correction to someone's name or replace a name or add a name, um, I can add another name to the database. And then when I come back over here to my, um, to my sheet and I select down, you'll notice it automatically inserted whatever I added or updated into my drop down list. So another helpful feature of linking this drop down list to a table that might be hidden in your document is that if you have multiple forms and you're using the same drop down, then this is a really nice way to make sure that all you have to do is make that addition or change once and it can update all of those fields in that drop down. So it's dynamic that way, which is very helpful. All right, so now what we want to do is return that manager's title and department based off of what the user selects. And in this case, what we're going to do is use a VLOOKUP formula. So you can um, come up to the Formulas tab. And if you um, have recently used VLOOKUP, you can find it here. You can type equals VLOOKUP or you can search for it. It is um, up here in your formulas tab. So what I like to do is um, bring up the function arguments table and then go from here. So the value that we're going to look up, we're going to select the cell that we want to reference. So it's going to look up based on whatever is selected in that drop down list, then it's going to return um, the column and row of information that we want it to from our database. So then the table array, we're going to put our cursor in the table array, go back to sheet three, and we're going to select the entire table. And that's going to be our table array. The column index number is going to be which column in our database that we want to return. So for title, we know that's the second column over, number two, B. So we're going to put number two, the number two in the column index. And then range lookup, we're going to put false. And that is because we want it to return the actual value um, that's in that database. So then we click OK. And now we have a, our VLOOKUP formula there. And Notice how what the way VLOOKUP works is if it if there's if it deems it as an error, meaning well there's nothing in this cell to look up, therefore I have nothing to return to you, therefore I'm saying hashtag NA. And so if you um, what we're gonna do is wrap the VLOOKUP formula in what we call an if error, and then if it's if error, then we want it to 
appear blank because it's not really an error. It's just that VLOOKUP isn't finding anything to put there. So it's putting hashtag and A. We don't want it to show hashtag and A. We just want it to show blank. So the way we do that is we come up here and we say equals and then we say if error. And then we're going to put our VLOOKUP formula in keep that in parentheses, and then we're going to put com uh, a comma, and then we're going to put two quotes with nothing in between the quotes. So the nothing in between the quotes means that it's going to be blank. And then we're going to um, close the parentheses and hit enter. So now that's blank, so we don't see anything. Uh, but you'll notice if we do select from our drop down, if we select a name, the title does pop up. So um, we know that here we can see that we have our VLOOKUP formula that's wrapped around an if error to so that it will hide the hashtag in A. And we're going to just basically copy this exact same formula. And so what you want to do is um, hit control C and then we want to um, put our cursor, hit enter so we don't mess up that VLOOKUP formula. We select the cell that we want to um, also add that formula into double click and paste and now it what we want is column number three because the third column column C was the column with the department so we're going to put replace two with a three but keep the same formula for everything else and hit enter so now when we make a selection here um, the title and department update based on what we have in our database so you can try that and then if for some reason nothing is selected um, you can delete the information out of this and it will show a blank so now before we finish up um, a couple other things that I want to show you how to do to um, make this easier to read and look at. So one of the things that I've done um, on the original form that I showed you was I hid all the grid lines so that it just looks like a blank white piece of paper instead of having all of the little grid lines that a normal spreadsheet has when you log into Excel. So to do that, you simply come up to page layout and um, check the box where it's normally defaulted to view under grid lines, just uncheck it. And then that way your spreadsheet, those grid lines don't show up. So when your user opens up the document, it just looks like a clean white piece of paper, kind of like Microsoft Word looks. Um, the other thing that I like to do is we know that our, um, our margin line for our page is right here. And so I like to leave a little bit of um, some spacing here just in case that I've, say I've put a border around um, some of these uh, columns and things. Uh, for example, I want the header to have a thick box border around it and maybe these instructions. I want to have a regular box border, um, an outside border around that. So I squeeze in the last column over here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the first row outside of that and I'm going to hit control shift and my right arrow. And when I do that, it selects every single entire column to the right of where of the column that I highlighted. And now what I'm going to do is right click up here and hide all of that. And so then I'm going to come down and do the same thing at the bottom of my page. I'm going to select the row and then I'm going to hit control shift in my down arrow. That's going to select every single entire row in the entire spreadsheet and then I can come over here right click and say hide and the reason I've done that is again to make it look like more of a clean white piece of paper that your form is on um, so that people don't get confused when they open up an Excel spreadsheet they just see it's a massive spreadsheet with all these rows and columns now they're seeing it's a nice formatted page with your form on it all right, and so the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hide your other sheets in the document. So you don't want your users, when you email or you might email this form to them, you don't want them to be able to see these other tables, the other sheets that you put your tables on. Now, especially I would recommend that you never include any table that has any 
confidential data or information in it. Um, your data tables that you're pulling from should have information that's publicly available just because you don't want to send this off and have someone unhide or find that data if it happens to have confidential information in it. So be sure to be careful about that. But all you have to do to hide sheets is to right click on them and select hide, right? And so that is an easy way that you've hit, you've hidden all those other spreadsheets so that they aren't uh, readily visible when you go up um, to um, to uh, see the spreadsheet when you open it up so your users open it. But if a user is familiar with Excel, then they know um, that all they have to do to unhide a sheet is come down at the bottom, click unhide, and then they can see that there are two other sheets down there um, that can be unhidden. So there is a way that you can actually set these to be what's called very hidden. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So let's go ahead and unhide these right quick. I'm going to right click again and unhide and select sheet three and let's name these. And to name them, all you have to do is double click. And so we're going to say this is the survey sheet and we're going to say sheet two is called uh, table one. And then this one will be our database. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, instead of simply right clicking and selecting to hide the other tabs, what I wanna do is come up, right click on any of the tabs and I can select view code. And this is gonna open up your VBA window. Um, what what we're gonna to wanna to do if you you select the sheet that you're going to want to hide. And if you don't already have your source properties, so if you open this up and you don't see anything down here, um, you simply hit F4 to display this window and your properties window is going to display down here. And there you're going to see at the very end something called visible and you're going to have a drop down here where you have the ability to make the sheet very hidden. Okay, so I'm going to select very hidden on that one. And then I'm going to come up to sheet three. And I'm going to also make sheet three very hidden. And I'm going to click save. And then I'm going to, um, I can save my documents. It's prompting me to save it. And so I'll go ahead and save it. And then I can actually close out of there and you notice that those other sheets are hidden and when I come down and right click there's nothing to unhide. So that's a great way to make sure that any sheets you don't want to have visible um, make them very hidden. Um, the way to bring them back is to remember to right click and go up to view code, simply select the table again and make them uh, visible or even just hidden and then you can right click and unhide. All right. I know we covered a lot of information in the video today. What I'm going to do is include a table of contents in the description below this video that will allow you to jump to the particular part of this video that you may want to go back to and rewatch. Also, I've made this form available for purchase as a download. You can click on the link in the description below the video to purchase this form that you can use to customize for yourself and just so that you don't have to start from scratch. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it. You can click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel channel and then click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Visit my website SharonSmithHR.com and thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all my viewers with all the great questions and comments. If you have any comments or questions, be sure and leave them below. Thanks and I'll see you next time.